All right, Whitney, can you confirm that we have a quorum for the meeting for me? Yes. Um, One, two, three. We have a couple more people signing in right now. Okay, I'll just wait another minute or two. It looks like a few people signed on, then we'll be good. One, two, three. Is that our whole list or is the chat blocked? No, it's truncated a little bit here. Yeah. This more shows everybody that's in here. So I was trying to find a. One, two, three, four, five, six. We do have a quorum now. Okay, thank you so much. All right, um, good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to call this Gadget Board of Directors meeting for November 17, 2021 to order. The time is now 1.01. My name is Jill Boudreau, Mayor of Mount Vernon. Um, if you would please uh, stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you so much. I'm going to go ahead and ask um, our staff, Whitney, if you don't mind calling the roll call uh, today. Thank you. No problem. So Mayor Boudreau is here. Um, I have a sub standing in for Commissioner Janicki. Hi, uh, President Jackie Brunson, Treasurer of Skagit County. Thank you. And I have a sub uh, sitting in for Commissioner Wieson. Yes, Dave Thomas, Skagit County Assessor. Okay, Commissioner Browning. Here. Uh, Mayor Geard, uh, she let me know that she was not going to be able to attend today. Mayor Sexton? Here. Mayor Johnson? Here. Councilperson Holst? Councilperson Loving? Our CAC Chair Judy Jones? Here. And our Labor Representative Marge Root? Here. That's everybody. Okay, thank you, Wendy. Um, I think, is it Council Member Moulton is here maybe from Anacortes? Yes, I am. Great. Thank you, um, Mayor Boudreau. I just was interested to um, be an observer. Um, oh, okay. I'm sort of a last minute just um, attendee. So if I can be helpful, I'd be happy to, but um, I, I'm here to observe and learn. Okay, welcome. I thought maybe you're sitting in for uh, Mayor Gear, but thank you so much. All right. Thank you. All right, thank you. Next on our agenda <laughs> is our public comment time. Is there any public comments today? Uh, Joe, go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chair. I always appreciate the opportunity to address the Skagit Transit Board. Um, you may notice my backdrop. There's a few reasons. I'm an Amy Scarton fan. I believe in public in input. Um, that's my photo on a WSF poster, and I'm stepping away from the CAC after over six years of service, because, in part because I just respectfully disagree with staff uh, on their assessment of potential routes for next year. Um, didn't like how I found out about it, and I'll leave it at that. It's also my fault for not asking staff what was going on in the October meeting, and I really shouldn't have told the San Juan Ferry Advisory Committee before the board approved the route. That's on me, too. So I just don't want to be attacking anybody. Um, it is a sad day when staff want to prioritize a community who's duly elected representative just last April wanted to delay the further the building of the MLA out of the volcanic floodplain to ensure the long-term viability of this wonderful transit agency. I appreciate um, though some of the tough and fair questions we've gotten from the board over the years, like about the 2019 fare restructure uh, that CAC helped lead, and I was privileged to be part of that process, um, and also have a youth summer pass, and yes, address the climate emergency. A climate emergency, if not for the strong and mighty five Skagit River Basin dams, would have flooded at least one of our great cities less than 72 hours ago. A climate emergency amplified by human-caused climate change, created by overuse of fossil fuels, disinvestment in public transit, and a lack of courage to urge our fellow Skagitonians to relieve the strain on our rivers and roads the way New York's MTA is doing with cunning advertising. 
One of the things I find really frustrating is the political decision by this board not to support this agency advertising its services more. Um, I think this agency provides world-class service on a very efficient budget. I am very appreciative of all employees of Scanty Transit, but especially Brad Lundler and Dale O'Brien and Orton Flores and Whitney Hernandez, for starters. Um, I just asked the board, please center those closest to the pain and focus on our allies in West Dodd and climate. Let's get some kind of some kind of transit relief, whether it's a shopper shuttle or something else, to connect better to our ferries when our ferry system is in the crisis that it's in. Ultimately, if you believe in scattered transit as much as I do, then please fund scattered transit. And if you see wasteful spending, call it out. But let's get that maintenance operation administration faci facility funded to completion. Thank you for your time and thank you for your continued service to our community, all of you. Thanks. Thank you, Joe. All right, any other public comment today? Okay, seeing none, we'll go ahead and move along on our agenda. So item number five is our consent agenda or consent and action items. There's two items. Item A is the approval of the October meeting minutes and B is the approval of claims and payroll direct deposit checks, uh, federal withholding transfer and claims. Looking for a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Thank you. And I'll, I'll second it. Thank you. Motion by Steve and a second by Julia. All those please indicate by saying aye. 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 If any opposed, same sign today. All right, seeing none, the motion carries. Thank you. Uh, next up is item six. It's our full discussion and action items. So item A is our monthly update, uh, a monthly budget update report for October. So I think I'm gonna turn it over to Arden. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, the monthly budget reports are presented for your three items of interest are for revenues. Skagit Transit received $1,316,766 in sales tax revenues for the month of October 2021. This brings total collections for the year to $12,474,068. The following table compares these information to what was collected in 2020 and 2019. For October of 2020, we collected 1,212,646. October of 2019, 1,169,573. For January to October of 2020, 10,516,803. January to October of 2019 is 10,879,447. The October 2021 collection is 8.6% higher than October 2020 and 12.5% higher than October 2019. The 2021 total so far is 18.6% higher than 2020 and 14.6% higher than 2019. We also received 850,433 in federal and state operating grants. This, is, this total includes 749,943 from the Coronavirus Response and Relief Some Supplemental Appropriations Act 2021. For expenses, notable capital expenditures, uh, bus shelters, 71,998, uh, MOA2 construction costs, 365,463, MOA2 design and construction management costs, 62,806, fuel is within budget and all other expenses are as expected. Reserves, the current reserve account balances and prior year comparisons are for operating reserves, Reserves 5,020,047. Facilities reserves 4,400,000. Capital replacements 4,010,651. And non designated is 1,504,422, bringing our total reserves to 14,935,120 as compared to 9,422,778 for October of 2020 and 6,261,196 for October of 2019. Staff recommends the board approve the monthly budget. All right, thank you, Arden. Any questions for Arden on the monthly budget report? <clears throat> There's no questions. I'd entertain a motion to accept the monthly budget report. Move to approve, this is Peter. Thank you. 
I'll second that, it's Steve. Thank you. So motion by Peter, second by Steve. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. All right, motion carries, thank you. Uh, now into our uh, information items. Item 7A is our budget PowerPoint presentation. And um, I'll guess I'm gonna turn it over to Dale, but I think it's probably a tag team with Arden. <laughs> Okay, um, let, me, I'm, uh, let me just share my screen here for a second. Okay, can you all see that PowerPoint presentation? Can you all see the PowerPoint presentation? Affirmative. Yes, I think we yeah, we can see it. Great. Okay, so uh, this is the uh, Transit 2022 budget presentation that summarizes uh, some of the information on the draft budget that um, that was also included in your packet. So um, I guess it's always good to see where our operating revenues are coming from. So this, as everybody can see, we rely on mostly on sales taxes to fund our operations. And this is how it's been that few years, few years before the pandemic. Um, we used to be able to rely all solely on sales taxes, but then um, we then started needing grants to supplement it. Uh, so sales taxes makes up 81% of our operating revenues before the pandemic, grants 12% and fares for six, only 6%. Um, and now Everybody knows that we, we received all these federal stimulus funds starting in 2020 and 2021 and also in the 2022 budget. So again, this pie chart here kind of um, shows that we, we were able to utilize these grants to supplement operations and less reliance on sales tax that we received. Uh, just wanted to give that, show that comparison but of the pre-pandemic and um, during pandemic and then the pandemic years where we received these federal, these um, significant amount of federal stimulus. And so just a sort of a summary of how much we received so far in our federal stimulus. So in moving my screen back in my own screen. So um, we're, we've been allocated a total of $18.1 million in federal stimulus. Uh, there's, first is the CARES Act of 2020. Now we've already, um, we've already received all that $7 million in CARES fund, $3.8 million in the coronavirus response and relief support appropriations act. And we, we expect to recoup that entire $3.8 million years end. And for ARPA 2021, the $7.3 million that is included in our 2022 budget, and we expect to be able to recoup that entire amount, um, hopefully before before the, uh, before the before the ending of 2022. Uh, federal stimulus funds were received in the form of FTA 5307, <laughs> our urbanized area formula grants, and this allowed the use of funds to pay for operating costs, including salaries and benefits. And of course, the end result is sales taxes that we were that were normally used for operating expenses. We were able to put that all in our reserves. No surprises there. I think that that was communicated all throughout um, uh, 2020 and 2021. Any questions so far before I move along? No. Um, okay. So for operating revenues, uh, so this is uh, this is our summary of. Uh, First, comparing our 2019 Act to 2020 actuals, our projections, and our 2022 budget. So for sales taxes, as you can see, we received 13092314 before the pandemic. It didn't decrease as much as we thought it would be during 2020. It actually increased by a significant amount in 2021 based on our actuals for the first three quarters of the year projected three year end. And um, we're, we're, we're creating some kind of an, a conservative estimate for 2022. And if, 
Uh, it's a, this is a conservative estimate. Some transit agencies are projecting as increases of about as high as 5%. Uh, in our case, we just wanted to remain conservative at this point. We receive more money than that needs more money towards our reserve. For operating grants, uh, again, you can see the, the 2020, 2021, and 2022 sort of reflecting the additional federal stimulus monies that, um, that we're receiving. Uh, for fares, uh, 935,049 in 2019 before the pandemic, and you can see how how it's decreased based on our decrease in ridership. It sort of uh, it sort of um, stabilized a little bit, and hopefully uh, it starts to increase as as the situation gets better. But we're project uh, we're estimating about 592,964 for the 2022 budget, and for the the other line item. Uh, the, 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 the amount that you see mostly in 2019, 2020, and 2021, right? that's really our, our uh, the lease. Uh, we had a vendor leasing that MOA2 facility, and uh, because started construction, then we don't uh, we don't have that that vendor thing there anymore, and, and given us our lease payments, which is why uh, our 2022 budget is uh, considerably less. So again, so as, as far as our total budget estimates for operating revenues, we're estimating. Meaning 23 million 80,926 for our 22 budget as far as operating revenues are, revenues are concerned. Any questions so far? Okay. Any any questions for an RD? You've uh, I'm having I'm having to really listen to you because you're kind of sometimes you're cutting in and out and I don't know if that's a microphone oh. or an internet connection um, issue, but just yeah. If anyone else is having, I'm having a problem. I'm just listening as close as I can. So, but any questions so far? Yeah. Oh, okay. am I cutting in? Okay, so uh, just let me know if we, we need to change something. But I don't know, maybe I'll talk a little slowly. Maybe that will Yeah, maybe why don't you do bit. that? And then if you're a little bit closer, like okay. you are, maybe that'll be, that'll work fine, so. Okay. Thank let you. A little closer, so just let me know. Uh, and let me know if uh, you want me to, go back or do we do something but okay. I think we can follow along especially with the graphs and then the information sent with the oh. packet but yeah go ahead okay okay so uh so so now for our operating expenditure categories again salaries make up 27 percent of our operating expenditures and then material supply 13 percent services four percent and insurance of three percent and half of about uh, materials and supplies make up about uh, make up fuel costs. So basically, between salaries and fuel costs, make up almost eighty percent of our more eighty percent of our operating expenditures. And that has not that has not really changed throughout the year. So again, for our, so before I we present the twenty twenty two operating budget, we want to summarize how twenty twenty one turned out for our actual expenditures. So in the twenty twenty one budget, the board approved six. Sixteen million four hundred thirty-eight thousand and twenty-four. And as a reminder, I think when we presented the budget, we were we budgeted as if it's a normal year, so to give us the flexibility on being able to adjust it as as, as hopefully services open up. And so this is basically how uh, it's turned out for 2021, uh, based on actual and then uh, as far and actual as far as the three quarters first three quarters of the year projected throughout year end. So uh, it's, we're expecting to uh, incur about almost $15 million in total expenditures. And the biggest, uh, I guess the biggest difference is really in salaries and wages and benefits between attrition and hiring challenges. Uh, we have a total of 150 50 FEEs in, uh, in the 2021 budget, and it's gone down as far as 135 um, at one point in the year it's, it's back down to 100 i think it's 100 we are 144 at this point so between salaries and wages and supplies and materials which makes up the the fuel costs um, uh, because we were at reduced services until um, up through july of 2021 that's basically the um, the amount of money we were not we were not able to spend because the pandemic still occurred so Budgeted 16.4, we expect actuals to be closer to $15 million. 
So I'm assuming no question. Like I said, just interrupt me at any time if anybody has any questions. But that's how our 2021 summary looks like. So uh, I want to do uh, start by showing okay what is our proposed operating budget highlights for 2022. So for salaries and benefits, we're request we're requesting uh, an additional $746,000 for salaries and benefits as compared to our 2021 budget. And that is for, the first part of that is 4% uh, COLA for non-represented uh, employees and 2% uh, based on the current collective bargaining agreement for our drivers. And I think, uh, Dale, you wanted to say something about this. Yeah, I wanted, to, I wanted to share with the board, our last market comparison was done in 2016. And at that time, we were more than 5% below market for oh, probably over 90% of our positions. So we feel right now that if, based on um, Arden had brought up the fact that we've had some uh, hiring challenges, we have the money right now to propose a 4% COLA to, according to this right now, the non-reps. And that is to retain our, our employees and the fantastic job that all of our employees did during the pandemic. And um, speaking of the pandemic, that money will cover the increase of the 4%. The 4% COLA is pretty standard right now throughout the transit agencies on the West Coast. Um, the only one that's a little different right now is Whatcom, but they have a CBA, excuse me, a CBA for their third year, and that's a three point three and a quarter percent increase. So we feel that it would be behoove us to make sure that our employees are well compensated. I will share with the board that in our CBA with our drivers, there is a clause that they can open it for, for wages and benefits. So based on their contract currently has a 2% we anticipate it will open for that 4%. But um, the CPI right now for this area is 6% and things continue to go up and we ch we're challenged to get good employees. We wanna retain our employees and would like to recommend to the board the 4%. So um, if there's any questions I would like, I'll, I'll field those right now. Questions for Dale on this proposal? Yeah, Mayor Boudreau, I, I, have, I have a couple of questions on that if I can. Sure, go ahead. So this, this uh, request is $746,000. That's over the 2021 budget amount, correct? That you're that correctly? You're right, uh, you're right, Mayor. You'll see the, 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 the different bullet points that um, I, that showed the other, the other part of that 746. Okay, so if I'm if I'm reading that right, we're a million dollars under in salaries and benefits right now. Yes, you are. Actual, you're, you're, actual, actual, you're right. You're right. Actual to budget. Yes. So this is really a one point seven four six million dollar delta then. Uh, no, I think maybe I'll show you the graph comparison. So so maybe you'll see more uh, of of how this is amounting to. But this is basically where we're requesting this. But we're probably if if the the hiring challenges and the attrition continue, then we're, um, we might not even reach it. But I guess it's 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 over the 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 2021 budget, if that makes sense. So, so right. in, in other words, sorry, Mayor. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Dale. In, in other words, this is an increase of seven hundred and forty-six thousand dollars, are you? Yes, it is. it is for uh, it for uh, compared to the 2021 budget. Right. But the, the currently you're projecting actuals for 2021 to be a million dollars under that budgeted amount. Yeah, right, right. So comparing 2022 ask to 2021 actuals, it's a 1.74 million dollar di difference. You, you know, you actually you're, you're right. Correct. Right. It is. It is. Okay. That's, so you're absolutely right. Yeah. So that, that's a huge, that's a lot of, that's a lot of, I mean, I, I mean, getting it budgeted that way is one thing and achieving it is obviously another, um, but I just want to clarify that in, in the, the 4%, in my opinion, um, if we're looking to 
reward or or recognize employees who have done a great job, you know, I would propose a one-time payment rather than resetting this COLA, which will which will be added on to in perpetuity, if that's if that's possible. That that can that can certainly be looked at, Mayor. So maybe for the board and, and just so that I'm also clear. So the staff is proposing the budget today and it would not be actionable until December, correct? That's the December correct. meeting. Okay. So there's yes. plenty of time for, for <clears throat> the board to get together and, and talk through their ideas um, on this whole issue. So just want to make sure the board knew that we're, we're talking through this and we'll discuss, continue to discuss. So. Fair enough. Um, okay, so, uh, oh, sorry. Arden, maybe um, I'll have you maybe finish this particular piece because I'm assuming that there's medical increases and stuff that is part of that 746 number. You're right. Mayor. So yeah. maybe if That's, you go uh, I'm ahead. I'm going through different bullet points here. I'm sorry, there's, there's, there's additional bullet points here. Yeah. Okay, so let's keep going and then we'll I'll ask um, for thoughts from the board too. So, okay. So, uh, and again, this uh, for, for additional FTE, we're requesting four additional FTEs made up of one FTE for the HR manager. So we had an HR manager in the in the 2020 budget. Um, we lost our HR manager in 2021. Now we wanted to hire an, another HR manager for 2022. One FTE for a facility supervisor and two FTEs for cross train drivers. And then the last is increase in medical premiums. 5.5% regions and 7.3% for Kaiser Permanente. So these three bullet points is what makes up the $746,000. Okay. Part of it. Or um, maybe as a note for the board to send out after the meeting, um, Arden, could you kind of just assign numbers to those okay. as well? Oh, that sure, would be sure. helpful. Um, I can, and I can I, show you the breakdown. Okay, and it'd be helpful, I think, for us to know how many employees are covered by the CBA and then how many non-reps are we talking about? I think that would help gotcha. just with information. Okay, I will include that information as well. Okay. Any questions from the board before we keep going on this or, or requests for information between now and December on the salaries and benefits? Okay, go ahead, Arden. Okay, and then so that is the that is the biggest category that we're requesting for an, an increase. The the other category is for services of two hundred six two hundred and sixteen thousand dollars, and this is made up of uh, the, we're budgeting this based on our assumption of a twenty four seven security for MOA two construction, but this may not be all necessary. We're just budgeting for it. I think Dale wants to speak to this too. Yeah, that. That's for a full year, 24-7. Phase one of the MOA will be completed most likely in late March. At that time, the skin of the building, the building will be completely enclosed. As it is right now, the building is open. We have equipment in there, so there is a need for 24-7. So that 216,000 won't be, it won't be near that much because after the skin's back on the building, we will not have 24-7 security. Any questions initially on the services portion? Okay. Okay. So basically, this uh, this is this is the most significant uh, uh, reasons for our increase. So now I can uh, show you the the comparison between now knowing that these two make up under a million dollars of uh, increase from the and like I said, this is based on. An, I was referring this to an increase over our 2022 budget, and here's our here's the comparison that I made earlier, and here's a comparison with with our proposed 2022 budget. So you can see the uh, this is 17.5 as compared to 16.4 on the 2021 budget. Like I said, it's it's uh, we don't know how 2022 will actually turn out, but uh, that, that's what the comparison was uh, was based out of. Arden, why did the casualty of liability go up so much? 
Uh, that is based on uh, our WSTEP. And maybe I think, Joe, Joe, do you want to speak to us a little bit as to why our premiums went up? Sure. So that is is uh, based a lot on what we have. We have a, a large fleet of new vehicles. Uh, they're being assessed. We've also taken a hit on several of our large coaches that we uh, have been involved in accidents. Both, neither of them that were our fault, but if they require replacement costs due to uninsured motorists. It gave us a, a considerably lower premium due to COVID. Correct. Um, that was true. I think so, you that right. True. Correct. So in the 2020, we had budgeted for 2020. We they had charged us for additional money, but then they refunded that money in 2021 because we had reduced services. So it would reduced uh, miles on the road was a large portion of that. So then for 2022, uh, we're budgeting for you know, we're being billed for. They bill us in advance, for example. Mm -hmm. So we're being billed for full service. And does that answer your question? Yeah, and then the the uh, seventy thousand on miscellaneous does that just cost of the new building and all of that, or is there something else we should know about? Uh, are you are you talking about the increase in miscellaneous? I can give you the breakdown of what makes up the, the that increase in miscellaneous, Commissioner. But that's just the the additional miscellaneous cost from all all the departments. Um, it's, it's coming from 12 different departments as far as what those are. So you can, it's probably all over um, all over the board, but I, like I said, I can give you a detailed breakdown of what makes up um, that uh, that miscellaneous line item on the budget. If anything, that's probably just preparing more for, um, for, for full service as we move forward. Okay. It's not necessary. It just seems like a big jump, but the, the casual liability concerns me and that's still, does because I have a general dislike for insurance companies. So <laughs> if, if I could add, um, there is just a, an across the board increase in insurance. Yeah. So that's, a lot right. of that is driven by, from what I understand, driven by catastrophes, forest fires, um, hurricanes, floods, all those sort of things. The insurance companies, you know, they care that Skagit Transit and our WISTIP partners as a whole have a good record, but Insurance is just costing more, so it's we're gonna we're being billed more just based on the risk that we all to <laughs> to them, and they're they're passing along their losses to all their customers. All right, thank you. Okay, other other questions. Good dialogue. Like it's it, it's a hard year to compare to, um, you know, twenty twenty and twenty one budgets. Uh, going in, especially even revenues, or it looks like, oh my gosh, huge jumps. But yeah, we forgot about the last two years. So, all right. Any other questions before we continue the, the moving on? So, right. Jill, I have one, one quick ahead. question, if I can. Sure. Uh, on supplies and materials, that shows about a 9% increase. Is that based on inflation and uh, maybe an increase in ridership, or is it basically just an inflationary factor? Uh, for supplies and materials, uh, mm -hmm. there, I think the uh, it's actually a small decrease from the 2021 budget. I think the the reason why is because we're preparing now for, as you can see, I mean, if you compare the 21 budget to the 2021 actuals, the reason why that's less is because it was not till July until we till we went to full service. So there's only there's very reduced fuel costs there up through July. Um, now we're expected to be in full service for the whole of 2022, so there's not, you know, we don't expect that that much in in uh, fuel reduction costs because we were we're going to be in full service. Right, but, but you know, I guess I should clarify when I look at budgets for for the next year, I look at actuals. I don't I don't really pay much attention to what was thought okay. was going to be actual actual in 2020. So when I look at what well, I was comparing 2022 budget to 2021 actuals. And that's that nine percent increase I was I was referring to, and I was just curious if it's if it's inflationary because it, it's getting you're gonna have a full year of service versus half a year of service roughly plus the inflationary factor of of things just gonna be costing more into the next year as well. So I, I didn't know if that was underestimated or if that if both those factors were taken into account. So 
Uh, I can look at how we, uh, uh, Greg, do you remember when you gave me that fuel? Well, I, did, 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 I think we, we, I think we did our best estimate on what, how we think fuel prices would be for, for 2022. And that what that took a, uh, that was a major consideration where we're projecting the 2022 budget. So I guess if you will compare the 2021 budget to the 2022 budget, we are actually seeing a little bit of a saving here. So I, I, I don't know, maybe that, uh, I don't know if that answered your question, answered your question, but, um, we're expecting, and in 2021, we're expecting it. This is a budget for a full year of, Full, um, full service as compared to another full year of full service in 2022. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Okay. All right. Okay, so keep going, Arden. Okay. So, um, uh, so that was our operating budget. Now uh, let's go to capital for our 2022 proposed capital budget highlights. So our total capital budget for 2022 is $14.96 million. Uh, notable is well, of course the MOA2 construction. So the phase one construction remaining, that this is an estimate. Um, it's 1.5 million. I guess this is this is estimating that we're going to be a little over halfway. Uh, by the time year end, so we expect there's going to be $1.5 million more, more of expenditures in 2022. And we're expecting the phase two construction that have to be to happen around the second part next year. And that's, that's going to be around $11 million. For vehicle replacements, $1.41 million. That makes up, that's made up of one fixed route bus five pair transit buses, three van pool vans, one maiden shop vehicle, and one staff vehicle. Again, this is consistent with our vehicle replacement schedule. And radios server upgrades of $466,000. And I believe Chris is going to uh, say something about that. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, so as far as that 466,000, um, we've had a lot of uh, pain points with our radio system. So we're actually um, teaming up with WTA um, and hopping onto their radio system. And that's a plan that uh, sounds like will come to um, completion sometime in quarter three of 2022. So a majority of that cost for the radios and server upgrades is for our radio system. And that's assuming that we're buying all brand new radios and repeaters for this system. Now, WTA wants to do the, the cost a little bit differently where we pay, say, $20 per radio uh, per month. So that cost could be severely reduced, but it's kind of like a recurring cost on the radios where we're just paying that $20 per radio. So I wanted to put the largest number in there, um, knowing that if that got approved, um, asking to use less money in the future and giving more money back to everything else is um, it looks better than you know asking for too little of money. Um, the other part of that is around um, 100,000 for server upgrades and network upgrades, and those are just uh, standard lifecycle replacements of our core infrastructure servers that we have upstairs um, and renewing all of our security policies on those servers. Uh, to keep us up to date on our anti-malware and things like that. Questions uh, for Chris on that? Mayor, Mayor, if I could just point out a couple, three things. Mm -hmm. The paratransit buses, those are grant funded. The three van pool vans are grant funded. And the critical part of the radio is we have a number of dead spots that we cannot talk to our drivers. Uh, mainly between here in Bellingham and then some into Everett. And if there was ever a situation that they needed to get a hold of us, we would have a we would be in in a severe situation. So I just wanted to point that out. Okay, questions on these uh, proposed capital budget items. Also in your packet, it, the full list is on page seven. If you were looking for that. Okay, all right. Keep going. Okay. 
And uh, just the last part of this, capital grants fund approximately 3.4 million of this total capital budget. So basically, both the way of saying most of this work, uh, especially the, the phase two construction, it's we're using local funds for this. Okay, uh, moving along. So now that you've seen the both, so now this is a summary since I presented our operating and all our operating and um, capital revenues and expenditures. This is basically what the um, what our summary is of everything coming in, everything coming out for 2022. So 26 million dollars, 26.5 million dollars coming in, and 30.5 million dollars coming out. Uh, so basically, we're going to be using $6 million from our reserves in 2022, which is again, what we, what we expected to do. So, uh, so $6 million in transfer from our reserves and I will show you our reserves as of our reserve projection of, at year end. So at year end, we expect to have around $17 million in reserves. Uh, if, if the board uh, remembers a uh, Several minutes ago, when I read the, the, the budget report, we had $14.9 million currently. And so we are still, we still have a couple of draws, federal draws for that. Uh, the federal stimulus by year end, so we're putting all that in reserves. We'll have about $17 million in our reserves at year end. So again, going back to this, drawing $6 million from that 17, uh, if all things turn out the same, turn out uh, they're not the way we expect. We'll have about $11 million remaining in our reserves at the end of 2022, which brings us towards um, 2023 for the phase three of the MOA two construction. Any, okay. any questions? Okay. I think what it, it's going to take a little bit for some of us um, directors to have everything sink in. And, and here's why. When we shifted the federal funding in and we put our regular operating kind of back in reserve, it, it appears that we're using this enormous, you know, reserve to balance the budget, which in like for me, I'm, I have to look at more like 19, 20, 21, and 22 to, to feel like I have a full picture of, of how it's all working. I don't know if that makes sense for the other directors, but it's certainly something I'm going to be thinking about um, between now and our our next meeting in December, so I I, I was I was excuse my myself when I was preparing this. I think the only the one thing to consider for us is uh, I, I I came up tried to come up with a different way to present it, but it's uh, I thought this was the easiest way. I think the, the easier part of our budget, of our fund model, is because we we don't have that much that many of, of restrictions in our in in our funds, just like you know, other local governments do. For us, we can use sales taxes on both operating and capital, it's just these the grants are the only things that we have to, uh, that, that we have restrictions on. Even our CARES money, we can use that on operating or capital. So I thought this was the, the, the best way of presenting it. Like I said, let, let me know if we have, how I can help you um, increase your understanding of this. Okay. Uh, okay, so again, just the um, questions, again, just a reminder, a copy of the draft budget was provided with the links for the meeting if you wanted to the details and um, for, for the board and for public comment and we will, in the next month's meeting, we will present the formal budget report for, and resolution for, for a formal budget approval during the December 2021 meeting. And uh, if you have, I'm sorry, just uh, before, before I, for any questions, just I just may I just have a couple of uh, slides left for the MOA too, but I just wanted to get the, the budget questions out of the way for now. Okay. Any questions at this point? I think what I'm gonna like to do is maybe I'll reach out to the other uh, directors and see if they'd like to have a sit down uh, with Arden between now and uh, the the formal December meeting. Um, just to kind of go over some details and, and ask questions. Sure. So so let's know that that's also um, will be out there as an invitation um, as well. Okay. 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 So um, Dale wanted to give me a give a presentation to so uh, for in regards to the status of our MOA two and our what our plans are for there. So this is our MOA two. This is our art, artist rendering of our MOA two facility that is uh, that we're trying to we're trying to build. 
Uh, this is this is the, the latest uh, of our construction. I think this is the this is a picture a few weeks back. There's been some changes in. And so uh, for some of the latecomers here that not, doesn't know much of the history. So in 20, 2014, a feasibility study was ident identified needs of the agency and future growth projections. In 2015, we purchased a former FedEx warehouse distribution facility located at the Port of Skagit. 2018, we purchased property north for uh, an ancillary facility. In 2018, uh, the initial project estimate at $30 million to convert the existing facility to a new Skagit transit base that we refer to as MOA2. And in 2019, a decision was made to divide the project into several phases to increase the chances of obtaining grant funds. So uh, the project phases and timetables. So phase one is $4.2 million work on shelf core east portion of the building. The construction is ongoing and projected to be completed March of 2022. Phase two is 11 million, which is the tenant improvement of each portion to make occupiable for admin and public areas. So the plan is for the construction start date of the second half of 2022, and we'll, we'll be using local funds for this. And phase three, estimated at $16 million, the remainder of the project is, uh, and we expect to get that done in 2023. So now there are some project completion scenarios. So as of now, we still need $10 million to finish the project. We have enough phase two. Uh, we don't have enough of phase three. So grant applications have been submitted. Uh, we submitted an application for the RACE grant and the FDA 5339 grant. Uh, our best case scenario right now is we expect RACE grant results to come out before year end 2021. So if that if that happens, then we have money to, to, to build the entire facility. And so our plan if that happens is we can, um, we plan to reach out to our design, design engineering firm too. So that, that there's not gonna be any more phase two and phase three. So that in, we'll ask them to design one, de design, uh, design this to the end of the project. So that is our best case scenario. Uh, uh, we didn't budget for it that way because it's we've been turned down for these two grants the, these last few years. So, but you know, we didn't budget for it this way. But that is what we're, we're hoping. So, if the raised grant is not approved, we move forward with phase two using reserve best plan. This is what our 2022 budget was based on. We expect the FDA 5339 grant results to come out around mid 2022. Uh, if that happens and we're going to feel good because we, and we have funding secured for phase three so we'll be able to move to phase three as soon as phase two gets completed and if both grants are again turned down then we'll um, consider a loan option and presented to the board in 2023 to complete phase three the only other thing that's not included in these scenarios um, is that we, we we don't have uh, specific information yet on how the the, you know, the new uh, the new path 1.3 billion dollar infrastructure project that the president just passed is going to you know filter down to all our transit agencies. So we'll update you as soon as we find out more uh, more about that. So um, and and that is it. So uh, any questions? Go ahead, Steve. Yeah, Arden, you know, I just got to say, you, you know where I stand on this whole phase two thing and, and the funding for it. You know, I, I I would say that technically that you are using, we are using local funds, but that would not have been possible without supplanting those funds, but with federal dollars. I mean, let's be honest. So You're right. it's, not really, it's not really something that, um, you know, I, I would put out there as, a, as something to be really proud of, in my opinion. Okay. Other... Comments or questions? Okay. Um, thanks, Arden. I'd asked him, uh, uh, Dale and then Arden, to, to kind of put us together on the like the pathway. I mean, we know these phases, but kind of where were we at and where were we were looking for different funding. 
Um, also on, on the raise grants themselves, you know, this year there was a $1 billion um, competitive process and next year it will be $7.5 billion competitive process. And so I think a lot of us smaller agencies that are looking for those specific grants, um, City of Mount Vernon included, um, are gonna have a, um, a better chance at least um, if you look at the, the opportunity for next year. So fingers crossed for, for all of us. So, okay, any other questions for Arden before? We move along. Okay. Thank you, Arden. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Before we move on, just to finish up our agenda, just again, recapping if any of the directors want to have us sit down and go over more budget detail, um, let me know, let Dale know. Um, we'd like to make it as efficient as possible. So if several of us can meet, not a quorum, but if we can meet and go over that, then we'll make that happen between now and our sure. December meeting. All right. Thank you. All right, um, item eight is our community advisory committee reports. Is there any report? I guess I'll look for to Judy for that or Dale. Um, well, I, I'm here, but Dale can take it if he would like to. Oh, and go I ahead. and go ahead, uh, Judy. okay, well, thank you very much. I, I appreciate that. Um, we, as a committee, the first, one of the first things we did was um, nominations for 22. 2022 CAC officers took place. Um, and since we are virtual, the voting is occurring via mail-in or by phone call and the results will be announced at the December meeting. Uh, next, we had a prioritization of recommendations for upcoming bus routes that are gonna be taking place next year. Uh, and we did sit and uh, you know kind of, kind of hammered out what our priorities would be for these and the rationale for them. And I recommended that we also send this information in, you know, individually into Brad for documentation purposes. Staff report was also given on the addition of maps to kiosks at the Skagit station, checking up park and ride. Also noted was that the Western Washington University ridership has increased in October, that's good news. And lastly, the Cedar Woolley Food Bank pull-out shelter and bench are soon to be in place, so that's great too. Um, we also have a subcommittee that I appointed, which we're calling the Region Awareness Committee, that talks about adjacent uh, you know, concerns of uh, bus connections uh, and ridership in our adjacent counties. Uh, there was a need expressed for more and better time effective connections into Seattle, you know, especially when it's not during peak hours when trying to get to work. Uh, one of our members is a school teacher and she was giving the example of having to be, she lives in Mount Vernon, but having to be at her elementary school in Seattle. And it takes her two hours when she leaves Mount Vernon to get into her job and you know we're thinking that you know that's just one example where connectivity uh, in bus in the bus systems and the, the connections between the counties could improve we need to you know really look at that and of course if we can do that that would that would increase ridership um, the other thing we had the other concern was also um, what is going to be happening in our future interaction and networking with the ferries, uh, how that's going to affect the population, and what can we look at to help increase better connections that way. And then also, of course, um, uh, Joe announced his leaving the committee. We're all gonna miss him. And I know that I've really appreciated his, uh, his dedication and hard work and his perspective and his input. And that about sizes up our report for November. Thank you very much. Any questions? Great. Thank you, Judy. Any questions for Judy? Okay. All right, moving on then. Um, item nine is our executive director's report. Dale, anything to share? Okay, real quick, Mayor. On Monday, November 15th, we were alerted by the 911 of a Greyhound bus that was, had driven around the barriers on Chuckanut Drive and driven into the ditch. We responded with a 40-foot coach to shelter 30 passengers in place from the bus. 
it was determined that Greyhound could not remove the bus by the towing company. So the passengers were taken to Skagit Station and sheltered in our meeting room. Lodging was finally found in Everett for the passengers and we shuttled them to the Everett Station and a hotel in Everett awaited and picked them up and transported them to the hotel. We finished around 1230 that night. I just wanna give a special shout out to our operations department, Melinda Hunter, who was our operations supervisor on duty and Tammy Coppinger, who was the driver that got these people to Everett. So um, it was my understanding that some of they couldn't get the luggage out of the bus. So some people were in their stocking feet and barefoot and no jackets. And so it all worked out for, for the best. And Dale, are we billing Greyhound for that service? Um, <laughs> I am in conversations with them. There's a backstory to that. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a premium charge for that kind of work, Absolutely. but okay. I mean, definite, <laughs> definite kudos to our staff. That's um, a pretty amazing community service there for those folks. So thank you. Jill, Jill, I was going to, I was going to advise, maybe we take note of the driver's name. So if we ever apply as this gadget transit, you'll know. That might Just be a good idea. That too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he's looking for a job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any questions for Dale on that? All right, great work for, for our Skagit folks, thank you. All right, with that, um, we've uh, completed our agenda and we will now be adjourned at 1.56. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.